but you have to become, at your own pace, at your own comfort level, more and more and more as the Creator is. And you have to not be afraid of embracing your power. And you have to know that you're a good person, that you are an abundant being that does not perceive lack and therefore does not need to steal happiness from others in order to be happy him or herself. This is where the false humility story comes into play. It's like, well, if I am powerful, then other people must lack power. If I am happy, then other people must be lacking happiness. If I am happy, I can only be happy by stealing it from you because there's only so much water on this planet, because there's only so much money in the bank, because there's only so much happiness around. Man made thoughts. Not God made thoughts. How does God see life? How does the Creator see life? How does your higher self perceive this moment? As one of many infinite possible realities, all coexisting right here, right now, with no lack for anyone in any aspect of life. That is how it sees creation. If you want to become more like it, you have to see more as it sees. How do you do that? Clear out any perspective that makes you feel bad. That's where the guidance system of the emotional body comes in. It is your higher self letting you know the fastest way to merge with it, to become more like it in form, in expression. Whenever you feel bad, it is letting you know that you're placing your vibration further away from the truth of creation. Whenever you feel good, it's letting you know that the way you see life is rooted in a vibrational state, a position that is closer in alignment to the way that the Creator sees itself. That's what feels amazing. So in order to attract an amazing life, pay attention to when you feel bad. Transform the negative perceptions that distort you further away from the one and replace it with a perspective that is holistic, beautiful, compassionate, and abundant and infinite in nature. And you'll feel instantly better. Why? Because the emotional body is not a random mechanism, although we've polluted it quite a bit. Make it seem random. But it is a very clear guidance system, even now in our polluted state, of higher self communicating to lower self whether or not our perspective is right or wrong. Very simple. Yes, there is right and wrong in that sense. Not value-wise. Everyone is right. Everyone has validity, equal validity. But in terms of your perspective being correct or incorrect, that's absolutely there. And incorrect perspectives still add to the expansion of creation, so it's still allowed, it's still valid, it's still loved. However, from a very individual, relative point of view, the quickest way to become more as your higher self already is, is to notice when you feel bad and change your perspective to one that feels amazing, which is literally your higher self entering your being, letting you know, thank you for widening your channel to receive more of me. <sighs> this is what feels good. When it feels bad, it means you're contracting yourself. You're pinching, you're squeezing the flow, the amount of flow of higher self that is possible for you. So something is hap up, something is happening, something is incorrect in the way you see life. In order to accelerate your expansion, which will always be gra gradual as long as you're physically focused, but that's beautiful, that's valuable, is to expand, to open up, to receive more joy, to know you're worthy of joy, first of all. Because to think you're not worthy of joy is already an out-of-alignment perspective. As long as you believe you're unworthy of feeling good, you're not going to allow yourself to feel good. So check in before you even try this empowerment thing. See if you believe you're worthy of feeling good. Or whether that's a bad thing, a sinful thing, an egotistical thing. My teacher told me I should not feel good. It's bad to feel good. It's not an acceptance. It's not in flow. I should feel bad and be really happy about that. I should feel bad and accept it as it is and not move. Just don't move. Don't think. Okay, sorry. Or are you allowed to be happy? Which is the way the universe communicates with itself. You have to understand that beyond the human level, there is only infinite bliss. There is no justification. There is no cause and effect. If you want to become more expanded, more selfless, more true in your view of life, you have to let go of the human view of life, which is rooted in lack and unworthiness. 
It's not true. It's valid. It's an expression of the infinite. But it's not true. It's not correct. It doesn't feel good because it's not correct. Whatever is true feels good. Like truly, holistically, peacefully good. And excitingly good. Not just like, oh yeah, this feels good, but underneath, no, I know I did something that, ah. I stole this happiness from someone else, and now I think I feel good for a moment. But no, not really. That's not the type of happiness I speak of. The happiness, the feeling good I speak of is a holistic overflowing of goodness. <gasps> feeling amazing about yourself no matter what. That is what creation is like all the time. Aside from inside the human mind bubbles. Even the human mind spiritual bubbles. If you truly wish to develop a true view, you have to let go of the human view, including re the religious and the spiritual and the self-realization human view. You got to really be selfless enough to get past all your barriers of sin and unworthiness and being afraid of your arrogance, which is the most arrogant thing you could do. Just be afraid of becoming arrogant. How arrogant of you to think that when you expand, you will become more egotistical. How is that possible? The ego is the substitute servant that takes care of us when we don't. What's the worst way to take care of yourself? By feeling bad all the time and reinforcing that, believing that that's how you should feel. Then, of course, the ego effect kicks in because it wants to take care of you, make sure you're all right, make sure you're safe. Paradoxically, the ego effect free state does not appear humble per se. It appears bright and luminous and shiny and generous and free and epic and awesome and radiant and powerful and it stands out but only because no one else does. Not because it is arrogant. It stands out because everyone else insists upon something that's not true and they're closing down their channel. Then someone that opens up will stand out. We'll see more shiny. We'll see more arrogant. Only because you don't. Listen to the arrogant people in this world. Learn from them. Not in a negative way. Learn from them in a harmonious way. Learn from the confident people. Learn from the shiny people. Whether in the field of spirituality or not. I don't care. Can be a business owner that's highly successful. And yes, that may have a lot of misperceptions regarding the nature of reality. But learn from their state somehow and apply it to your own harmonious integral knowing of the goodness that you are. Start shining yourself, start radiating, start feeling more expanded beyond your chest, beyond your body. The more you feel enclosed by the body, the more that is a sign that you're seeing things in an incorrect way. Yes, there is incorrect ways of seeing things. And there is more correct ways of seeing things, more accurate more relevant, more precise, more harmonious, more in line with all that is, being one inseparable being of infinite abundance. So shine, especially when no one else does. Step on their toes if they insist to put their toes right in front of your feet. Because that's what happens. Because when you start shining, you attract both more of the shininess as well as the opposite, making its unconsciousness more conscious to itself. How will it do that? It will attract certain shiny, standout examples. And it will bash them or embrace them. Learn from them consciously. Thank you. Or learn from them unconsciously. <laughs> but learn from what they attract, they will. So let everyone learn from you, because that's part of your service. In whatever way they choose to learn, positively or negatively. Accepting or rejecting. In resistance or in flow. Do not be afraid to shine. Or do. Whatever feels best. Whatever feels more precise, accurate, and correct for you. But if we could all light up a little bit more, then no one else would have to stand out as much. Because we all would. And then no one does. 
A hundred years from now, there won't be spiritual teachers anymore, as we know it. Hopefully. <laughs> be redundant. Be absolutely redundant. Spirituality will cease to exist. Because it's a man-made concept. It does not exist. We're just talking about life. We're just talking about creation. Spirituality is an antidote to having constricted our flow. Oh, are you a spiritual person by any chance? I've just discovered that I don't feel good all the time, and I want to explore what it's like to expand myself. Are you a spiritual person? Can I relate to you? That won't exist anymore. No, I'm not a spiritual person. That's just woo-woo. They're right. It is woo-woo. Spirituality does not exist. It is a man-made concept. It is for those that wish to escape. But also the view that there is no spirit, that there is no consciousness, that there is nothing more, is also incorrect. But spirituality is an antidote, temporarily necessary, to take us out of the compressed state, the contracted state, into the expanded state. Once you're in the expanded state, you see the inseparability of life and the brilliance of all that is. And then where is spirituality? Where is the spiritual person versus the non-spiritual being? Where is the one who is conscious versus the one that's somehow not conscious? It will cease to exist, hopefully. It will eventually. So when we all stand out, when we all shine, then no one stands up. And all will be brilliant in their own way, in their own right and accept it and learn from, and everything will accelerate. Do not be afraid to shine. It is what this world needs. It's the best way to be a whistleblower on the ignorance of humanity. It's to shine. It doesn't mean you have to speak out, necessarily, as I do. You can keep quiet if you want to. But by radiating, you will say so much more than you ever can from a contracted state of being. Be happy no matter what. Show people that they have the option to redefine the neutral appearance of the configuration of molecules. That's all it is, configuration of molecules, which is energy, which is consciousness. We can choose how we wish to respond to something all the time, what we wish to create, what we wish to generate, how we wish to feel, how we wish to perceive this moment. Show people they have this choice by being an embodiment of it. And don't long for instant manifestation of your amazing life, because it keeps your pace slow. Why? Because you keep seeing it as not yet here. And it will have to respond to it not yet being here. I want instant manifestation. I want that thing now. In other words, I don't have it now. And life goes, oh, you don't have it now? Okay, you don't have it now. Whereas if you let go of that and start appreciating the curve that you're in, the upwards accelerating, gradual, graduating curve that you're in, of accelerating the pace of your gradual manifestation so that the story makes sense to you and you can actually enjoy every stage of it, and the more conscious you are of yourself, the more in alignment you are with yourself, the quicker you learn from every single second, the more you extract from every single second. The more unconscious you are, the more it takes years to learn what a conscious person learns in a single second. So the more you become conscious, then yes, the more your manifestation abilities, seemingly, although they're already at their perfect maximum capacity, will start to reflect that ability to accelerate to instantly manifest things more and more quickly and frequently. But only because the one who more quickly manifests, not because they skip things, but because they learn quicker from what is. Because they're more conscious of what is. Not what is in the circumstantial sense, like, oh, this is, so I must feel this way. What is meaning, this shows up right now. It's a reflection of who I am. What do I want next? I want this next. Oh, this is a reflection of who I was. What does it teach me? Oh, mm, this does not feel, feel quite the way I thought it would feel. This, however, is amazing. Whoop, whoop. <gasps> Full amazingness here right now. Whoop, and then it reflects itself again. Oh, what is this? 
reflect in me. Awesome. So the more consciously you learn, the more quickly within a similar seemingly lifespan reality you manifest. But not because you're skipping steps, but because you're learning more efficiently. You need less time to bring something to your attention. Does that make sense? You can't skip ahead of your own theme. You wouldn't want to skip ahead of your own theme. Only the mind, rooted in the idea something is lacking now, thinks it desires that. But your true being desires to tell every single step of this story. How fun would it be to read a book and then to go from one page to the other and suddenly you notice you're missing a couple of scenes. It's like, wait, what? I have no context to understand this. It's not interesting anymore. Same is the case from the higher self point of view and from the personal consciousness point of view. You want to know what happens every step of your way, of your theme, no? Learn faster. Be more attentive. Be more excited about what appears and what it shows you and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is. So that what it takes someone else to take 10 years to learn and express and manifest takes you two days. That is acceleration. It's not skipping ahead of yourself. It is learning more efficiently. A little side note to that, a little disclaimer. <laughs> to the one that is in the accelerated stage, two days will feel like two years. What a perfect way to practice patience by learning not to wait. Because if you're not waiting, you don't need patience. How can you not wait? By being in full joy regardless of what is. So what I'm saying is, yes, you'll accelerate. What takes someone else to pay attention to in two-year time span because they're just so unconscious and not willing in that moment to face themselves, to make contact with their direct experience, their own creation. Those two days to you will feel like two years. So you'll still have the same sense of when is this coming? When is this happening? It's been two hours. My new house hasn't arrived yet. What the F? Whereas someone else that learns at a pace of two years what you do in two days, they go like, man, you're moving fast. I didn't know this was possible. And you're like, what, fast? Well, I guess I can see that from your point of view. Oh, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. Now I appreciate my flow that much more. And voila, the house comes. Because you were in appreciation of your flow, you changed your state of being. So always be in appreciation as much as you can. Be in confidence as much as you can. Take everything as a sign that things are working out, that you are being amazing, that you are learning. Always enjoy your present learning curve by knowing that it's awesome. And then what will always be gradual will accelerate. And by the end of a single lifetime, you will have written such an epic story for yourself that even though 20 years ago you thought you turned it into a book, by then you would know where to start. But you'll know that the book has been written, that the story has been told, and that all the evidence exists and is stored. And that many beings alongside you have learned from your story. In fact, all of creation has learned from your story. So the book has been written. Be the example. Be the expansion. Be the accelerated learning. Be your own point of attraction. Be your own creator. And everything else will benefit too. For after all, there's only one.